<laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's just been tricky with technology, but we're going to make it work. Dave, are you here? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, the Alice Pendleton Library. I know everybody, so I'm not going to introduce myself. But I am going to say that I'm wearing two hats today, one as the director of the library. Um, I would like to thank the friends of the library for hosting this program, um, which means we had a committee and got together and picked topics. And also the friends have um, provided refreshments. Who's a friend? Yvette's a friend. Good. And then who is on the uh, Lighthouse Committee? Oh, yes, excellent. So, we got, we're well represented. Committee member. I am a committee member. Oh, I didn't raise my <laughs> hand. I am a committee member of the Lighthouse Committee. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be having this talk here. And um, before we start, Liv is going to be part of the presentation. But if you don't know Liv Lenfesti, L-E... N F E S T E Y is what that says right there. It's a confusing last name. Yes. Um, anyway, she is um, our island fellow. We um, have uh, we submitted the application jointly with the Sea Level Rise Committee, um, and we are thrilled with her work. She's going to be here for two years working with both organizations and um, our, the, the Lighthouse is important in its own right. It, is, it needs um, a great deal of love and attention, but we are also using it to draw attention to sea level rise for obvious reasons. So on that note, I would like to introduce the chair of the Lighthouse Committee, uh, Dave Petzl, who is with us in voice, if not body. Would you say hello one more time, Dave? Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, so he's going to talk a little bit, and then we're going to go through this slideshow, and then there will be time for questions and answers later. Liv has got to get to the last boat, so... Um, Anyway, we're going to get started right now, and thank you all very much for coming. Dave, you're on. Yeah, well, well thank you for inviting me. It's a, a great opportunity to um, spread the word about what we've been doing over the last year, year and a half. Um, so uh, we have uh, some dedicated committee members here um, that are listed here, and I'll just go through them briefly and what their roles are. Ann Bertulli is our graphic artist. Catherine is our webmaster. Jeff is our digital artist. Jim Mitchell is our former chairperson. Melissa Olson is the um, librarian and also a co-investigator co on um, the Island Institute Fellowship that brought over Liv. Um, then there's Yvette Reed, who is the um, lighthouse keeper and also the um, secretary. Phil Seymour has worked with Jim Mitchell in the past for many years, working on in the Detroit Lighthouse, and Rachel Rolison is the co-chair. And of course, Liv is also uh, instrumental. Uh, Liv arrived on September, and she'll be leaving um, in a couple years. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the, the lighthouse back in good shape from there. Go to the next slide, please. Hang on, one second. Did it work? Mm -mm. Dave, I think it might be, I think you have the power to change it if you're he sharing he doesn't know. the screen. He, I don't, okay. Okay, I'll just do that. Yep, is that good? Yep, so yep. many of you are familiar with the uh, current lighthouse, but there's a lot of history uh, uh, at the Grimmel Point Lighthouse. Um, so the, the uh, picture on the right, uh, on the left, is the 1850 Lighthouse. And that was um, constructed, several of those types of buildings were constructed along the coast. 
and they were deemed uh, unstable by the lighthouse, uh, U.S. lighthouse establishment and were uh, replaced by the one on the right, which was built in 1875. Um, and so the lighthouse was taken off the roof of that keeper's house, and the keeper's house was, uh, roof was lowered, and then they built this square, almost square lighthouse that we all know to get today, and also the lighthouse. So there's a misnomer that these, these uh, lighthouses are called lighthouses. They're actually called light stations because there's more than one building. And so this year we were able to get some funding from the town to place a plaque on the lighthouse or on the keeper's house indicating that it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. And this is not just a plaque, but it opens a lot of doors for us for funding. So um, we're um, hopefully going to get some funding to uh, clean up the lighthouse, do a lot of uh, great things to restore the lighthouse. And so um, uh, these pictures are shown um, when you walk in the, in the keeper's house, but they're, but they're kind of hidden. So not many people know about the 1850 lighthouse. And also, I'd like to solicit any photographs that you might have of the lighthouse. I know that several people have shown me pictures of the light station, and there are buildings there that we've never seen before. And um, if you could send those along to, uh, to me at uh, dave.petzl at gmail.com, that would be great. We're, we're trying to set up a, an extensive website with lots of pictures. Uh, next one, please. So this is, these, this is the lighthouse station, um, somewhat uh, view that many people see often, but there's the going from uh, right to left. Uh, there's the 1875 lighthouse, which we just had painted. The 18, 1850 lighthouse, which is just the roof of that old 1850 lighthouse. And then we have the keeper's house from 1875, built about the same time the lighthouse was built. And then we have the 1890 boathouse. And that was not a life-saving boathouse, but that was simply for the keepers to go back and forth to uh, bring supplies to their um, to keep the lighthouse going. And then finally, there is the 1906 oil house. And that's that's that uh, viney thing that you might have not, re not recognized today, but in October of last year, uh, four of us spent four hours taking the vines off, and I think it looks like a pretty good building. So all these buildings were um, owned by the Coast Guard at one time, or the United States uh, Lighthouse Establishment, but they were sold to the um, town of Islesboro in 1935. So the town owns the property, and it's their responsibility to maintain them. And that responsibility is on the Lighthouse Committee's shoulders. So that's what we're trying to do is restore all of these buildings because they all need, um, need a restoration. We'll go through some of those uh, slide, uh, some of the uh, problems with the buildings in a minute. Next, please. So these are the, uh, our overall goals to restore the Brindle Point Lighthouse according to uh, state preservation standards in the context of sea level rise. So before you can really touch this lighthouse because it's on it's a historical place, you have to go through the state preservation office. And I've been in contact with that office uh, many times indicating um, what we can do, uh, was the appropriate phrasing on the plaque was correct. So I'm in contact with them. Um, and anything we do has to be approved by them in terms of structural changes. The second one, and most importantly, is to inventory the Sailors Memorial Museum's collection, expand the exhibits to the second floor of the Keeper's House, as originally envisioned by uh, Alice Pendleton and another uh, person in 1935. So in 1935, uh, we got the lighthouse, and she was instrumental in taking a lot of artifacts or the collections from around the island and put them in the lighthouse. Um, and so uh, those are our goals. Uh, with respect to sea level rise, we'll talk about that in a minute. But right now, let's have Liv talk about some of her um, efforts to um, work on the collections. Well, thanks, 
Thanks, Dave. Um, I'm Liv, our island fellow. I think I've met most of you. Um, thank you for coming. So I'm going to talk a bit about the work I've been doing in the museum, uh, which has been such a fun project. It's a little bit of a history mystery every day, but we're figuring it out. Um, so my job so far has been to inventory the artifacts that are in the Lighthouse Museum, um, most of which we've been aware of. There's an inventory of what's on the first floor, but kind of expanding our catalog to um, the artifacts that are kept on the second floor as well, um, and rewriting our museum mission statement, which currently reads the purpose of this museum is to preserve the memory of the seafaring men of Islesboro. Um, so hoping to create a more inclusive museum mission statement and expand our statement to reflect more of what our artifacts are saying and be truthful to the story that they are um, holding and all the things that have collected there over the years. Um, so these are pictures of what the museum has looked like, um, both on the first floor and the second floor, and it doesn't look like that anymore because of the generosity of the Historical Society. We've moved uh, most of the artifacts out of the museum and into the Historical Society for the winter where I've been working to create a digital catalog. Because why? Oh, because we found lead paint in the lighthouse, which has been a huge frustrating step back, but we're figuring it out um, and hoping to be open for the summer. Um, after repainting the interior. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, so these are some interesting artifacts that I found um, in our museum. The first is a champagne head that was broken over the side of the schooner uh, Brima P. Pendleton in 1902, which is pretty cool. Brian. What is it? Brian up Pendleton. Brian up Pendleton, awesome. Mm -hmm. She's See? Alice's sister. We have so many wonderful <laughs> stories on the island that I am so grateful for. Um, as well as logs of the oil wick and chimney logs um, that date from 1896 to 1914 that keep like incredible data on what was being, um, what materials were being used in the lighthouse, um, as well as things like some brass kerosene lamps from potentially a ship or in the lighthouse, um, lots of unknowns. But I'm really excited about this project. I've spent some of the fall traveling to other lighthouse museums around the state and learning about you know, how they position themselves and thinking about where our lighthouse fits in in this niche of you know, 65 lighthouses in Maine. What, what do we have to say that's so special? And I think there's definitely a great opportunity. Um, okay, thanks Dave, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> cool, thanks. Thank you. Um, so uh, one of the first things we uh, did as a committee was to find out, to uh, find out what um, apply for a grant to have an engineering study done on the uh, on the lighthouse, a structural engineering. And these next to four or five slides are the result of that engineering study. That study was funded by the Island Institute. Island Institute has been very generous to us thus far, as has the town of Islesboro. So this is a, a, a couple of pictures, dramatic pictures showing that um, the Joyce's below the watch tap, the watch room. The watch room is the room just below the lantern room and the lighthouse uh, are in dire need of replacement. So these these have to be replaced or repaired. Um, and um, next slide, please. This is our uh, old lighthouse roof, and that also has to be uh, re-roofed, as does the um, oil, the um, boathouse, and also the oil house roof. But this one has to be replaced. And also, there's a, there's a concrete base below the brick foundation of the uh, old lighthouse. And that is deteriorating. It, was, it wasn't constructed of, of the proper cement. And it looks like it was made with um, simply rocks from the, the, from, the, from the ocean. So that has to be replaced. That's another project that has to be uh, done this, uh, sooner than later. Next, please. So this is the most dramatic uh, deterioration of the, uh, the late station as far as we're concerned. Uh, this is a north wall of the keeper's house, and this shows that the foundation is buckling in. Um, and we don't know whether it's due to um, settling or rainwater coming off the roof, but the keeper's house has to be... Um, uh, uh, elevated 
and then this rock wall has to be replaced. And you can see that there is a, a good foundation for putting the um, uh, I beams underneath the keeper's house because it's all ledge down there. So this is uh, probably the most costly um, structural engineer that we'll have to do for the lighthouse. Um, next, please. This is the um, boathouse. And the boathouse is in dire need to have the uh, rotted posts replaced on the ocean side. Uh, these are um, uh, just weather beaten, and they have to be uh, removed, and pins have to be driven into the ledge. And there are also a couple um, uh, brick uh, pilings that also have to be replaced. So that, that is the boathouse. And finally, the oil house. The oil house is uh, in uh, remarkably good shape, despite the fact that it was under vines for many years, but it does need some structural uh, repair. The masonry corners have to be replaced. Uh, there is uh, some um, woodwork that has to be replaced, and the um, slate shingles have to be uh, repaired. Now, the slate shingles are in the uh, boathouse, so we don't have to get slate shingles. We just have to find a contractor who has those those um, those uh, expertise so those are the, the major structural um, items that have to be um, re, um, repaired in the buildings now there's some other minor things that um, the engineer did not show us but he will be giving us a report as soon as possible and that will report will lead to um, uh, recommendations and also recommended funding sources so that is the, uh, the bad news. Uh, the good news is next slide. This is what we accomplished this year. Um, we got the lighthouse exterior painted. Um, on the right, on the left is what it looked like um, a couple of days before uh, Jim Leslie and his crew came and um, painted the lighthouse. They painted all the way up to the bottom of the cornice because that was the best way to do it with the scaffolding. So it took them uh, five or six weeks, put up the scaffolding, scrape all the paint off, and then uh, not really paint the lighthouse, but they coated it. They put a mineral coating on it. And that mineral coating is uh, reported to last about uh, 10 years. Uh, the crew down here are four of the people that, that helped Jim Leslie. One is Jim Leslie, one is Kyle, Bill, and Bob. And so they, they um, would come over every day um, from Northport and work on the lighthouse. So it was a monumental task. And um, if you look at it from the ferry, from the mainland, it really does stand out relative to the, the, um, the keeper's house, which looks a little, a little dull now. So, uh, so that was a big part of doing it. They not only did the outside, the cornice, but also the three or four windows that needed uh, uh, re repointing and repainting. Uh, next, please. So, sea level rise on Islesboro. Um, sea level rise on Islesboro, as you might have noticed um, about a month ago, that uh, the sea level it is rising and it is flooding our, our roads at the uh, at the ferry road and also at the Narrows. Narrows was closed for two hours during the storm. Um, on this depiction here is a is a depiction of of um, a main geological survey simulation of, of what will happen at the Grimble Point with the predicted flooding of 1.6 feet. And um, these are simulations that you can um, uh, you can go to this website and you can look at your homes and you can see how many feet. Um, you can simulate different feet, uh, different number of feet uh, that the water is going to uh, come up uh, with uh, sea level rise, and uh, you might be kind of frightened what you see when you when you look at that. But these two circles on here are the ones that I predicted, or that the software simulation predicted um, to happen at the lighthouse at Randall Point. Like one was flooding of the lighthouse. That's the the circle on the left, and you can see that the keeper's house is still visible, but the lighthouse is in blue, so that means the, the lighthouse is flooded. And the other one 
is at uh, the ferry road, uh, right along line three. And we'll show you in a couple of slides that that is indeed what happened uh, during the December 23rd um, uh, storm surge uh, associated with a high astronomical tide. Now, a high astronomical tide is when the sun and the moon and the, and the earth are in line. And the reason they're so high in the winter time is that the sun is closest to the earth at that time of the year, believe it or not. So there's more pull of the sun and moon on the tide, on the water and the earth. And so um, it's a great time to take pictures of the high astronomical tides. Uh, next picture, please. So these are uh, pictures, these might have been pictures that Jim Mitchell took many years ago, or might have been pictures that um, Phil Seymour had taken. But what I've depicted here are some of the photographs that some of the citizen scientists have, have sent me um, during the astronomical high tides. And um, what I've also depicted are the worst case scenario for what, what could happen if there is an uh, astronomical high tide. So currently, the lighthouse is at an astronomical high tide plus one foot. So the base of the lighthouse uh, is one foot above astronom astronomical high tide. In 2050, which is predicted by uh, the main climate council, it will rise three feet. And that will put it at the base of the window uh, or two feet into the lighthouse. Um, at 2100, it's going to be eight feet. And these are all very dependent on melting of land glaciers, melting of the um, Greenland ice cap, melting of the um, uh, uh, Australia or um, Antarctic ice cap. So these are just very estimates. They're high and low estimates. And if you go to some of these websites, you'll see there's an um, intermediate. Um, uh, conservative and liberal estimates. So um, what happened on the 23rd is that we had the astronomical high tide um, about the time that we had that storm surge. So the lighthouse, we'll have the next picture, shows that the lighthouse actually was uh, over the couple brick layers, layers of brick on the left picture, a couple of uh, rows of brick, so the, the lighthouse um, was, uh, should have been flooded by then. And you can see where the, the bell tower is. It's, not, it, it's also covered. So that was a pretty high, that's a pretty good indication that uh, it was flooded. And I did a little experiment to reveal that it actually was flooded, not in the lighthouse, but in the, L, the um, old lighthouse. So there is water getting into the lighthouse that's flooding. And so that that's, uh, um, reinforces that main uh, geological survey that the lighthouse was flooded. And then on the picture on the right is a picture of the debris that um, washed up on Ferry Road. Um, I, I wasn't there to get pictures of the water over it, but Kara said she was uh, will send me some pictures of the water actually going over there, but you can see the debris. Kara was so uh, worried about the cars that she asked um, Fred Porter to find out whose those cars were and think they were going to be washed away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is a real threat. Uh, I don't have any pictures of the Narrows, but the Narrows was also inundated by um, flooding. So those, those predictions of those main geological surveys are pretty accurate relative to astronomical high tide. Next. So we, we, um, in 2002, we accomplished quite a bit, and we're looking forward to do a lot more uh, thing, a lot more projects in, this, in 2023. But this is what we've done this year. We were awarded that grant from the Ireland Institute for the Structural Engineering Study, and that was a town match. The town funded um, the Island Fellow from the Island Institute. We were, able, we were awarded a conservation assessment grant to evaluate the buildings and collections, and that will keep, occur in April of this year. So there will be some museum, trained museum specialists who will go through the buildings and the collections and determine 
uh, what our strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, we obtained a fair market appraisal of a museum collection, and that was town funded, and that resulted in increasing the insurance on the lighthouse from $10,000 to $40,000. Uh, we moved the museum's collection to the Islesboro Historical Society for cataloged and, and digital photographing. The Historical Society was very gracious in allowing us to do that. It allowed lived uh, space to spread out the uh, collection and also a room to take uh, photographs. And they've also allowed us to use some of their uh, uh, collection curation software. We painted the exterior of the lighthouse. That was town funded. We established a website, grindlelight.com, and um, generated a logo. And that logo is on stationery and t-shirts. Um, so uh, that was a big step. Um, we published articles in the Ireland newspaper concerning the light station and sea level. Some of the titles were Grindle Point Light Station and the Elephant, and the tides, they are changing. Um, we decorated the light station. Uh, Rachel uh, decorated the light station for Valentine and St. Patrick's Day, and also Halloween and Christmas. And we welcomed at least 327 visitors and 80 visitors from the Lively Ladies Sunday Evening Excursion from Camden. Now, I say at least 327 visitors. Um, not everyone signs our, our guest book, so that's probably an underestimate. We probably have more um, visitors than that visiting the, um, the gift shop. And the gift shop and the museum was only open for two days last year. And in the past many years, it's been open for seven days but we just don't have the staffing right now. And because of COVID, it was limited to uh, three or four people uh, per visit. Um, next slide, please. So our future is to continue our efforts to restore the light station inside and out. Uh, we have to um, paint the inside of the tower, paint the inside of the um, keeper's house, get rid of the lead paint, um, uh, paint the uh, outside of the oil house, uh, repaint the cornice on the, on, I'm, I'm sorry, paint the outside of the, um, uh, um, boathouse and also paint the cornice on the, uh, oil house. And we're exploring the mitigation effects to reduce sea level rise. Now the sea level rise that we saw on the 23rd was a modest rise. As I mentioned, the sea level, um, there are many predictions out there. And once the um, glaciers melt on land and this uh, Greenland ice cap and the Antarctic ice cap start to melt, uh, those 1.6 or three foot um, uh, rises may be uh, um, a flash in the pan. I mean, they'll be very, very much larger than and what they predicted. I don't know if you saw a couple of days ago that the Greenland ice cap, cap is uh, uh, warmer than it has been in the last thousand years. Uh, and that's based on ice cores samples. So our, our next, one of our next uh, tasks is to raise funds through annual appeals, grant applications, donations, and social events. And so what can you do? You can visit our, uh, our, our GrindleLight.com website and uh, fill up the thermometer on the right. Um, we, we have um, raised, out of three, our goal is $300,000 and we've raised $1,700 to date. So we have uh, quite a bit of ways to go, but if you, if you go to the website, it will require you to write a check and use a stamp and an envelope to uh, provide the donations to the town. It goes to the town. The town writes you a tax-free um, or a tax uh, letter indicating what the implications of your donation are, is, and then Yvette will send you a very heartfelt thank you um, after uh, its process in the town. So all of this was supported from many institutions. One was the town of Islesboro, as I mentioned before. They've been very supportive. The Islesboro Historical Society has opened up their space and given us a lot of support uh, 
the staff there have been instrumental. Uh, I first went there and I asked uh, Carlisle, do you know anything about a, um, uh, an inventory by, by some person? And she said, oh yes, I have that notebook. And so that's what triggered all this, that we, we found a notebook from um, Margie Condon, I think Margie. is the name. And that was uh, instrumental in starting the whole ball rolling for the Island Institute Fellowship, uh, our ideas. So that was, that was great. The Island Institute has given us uh, quite a bit of money, and we'd like to have donations from people like you. Uh, are there any questions? I'm going to, um, so I am going to try to talk. talk. Uh, uh huh, up here in the middle, the stop share. The red and gray. Ah, uh, yes, stop share. And there's Dave. Dave. Can you turn your video on? Yes. There he is. Are there any, see, I told you he's there. Are there any questions for Dave? Any questions at all? What kind of programs have been discussed in terms of the rising tide and protecting the lighthouse, the whole unit down there? Um, we've been talking about um, a coffer dam around the lighthouse. Um, we've been talking about um, simply putting scuppers in the bottom of the lighthouse so the water would go in and the water would go out, and that would preclude um, people going to the lighthouse uh, when there's a high tide and also eliminate any exhibits that might be sensitive to um, the, the um, uh, flooding of the lighthouse. Uh, we, I, uh, originally, I, I contacted the International Chimney Corporation, and those are the people who moved the Cape Patters Lighthouse. And um, at that point, we decided not to move the lighthouse. Um, we, uh, because there's no place to move it, uh, because in probably um, 20 years, it'll be uh, Grindle Island instead of Grind Grindle Point. Um, and I did, when the Coast Guard did come and inspect uh, the light this year, I asked the uh, chief Coast Guard person and I said, well, what, what, what can we do once um, the lighthouse floods? He says, well, we'll just put another metal pole back there that was there another uh, 30 or 40 years ago. So they had no money to uh, move the lighthouse, but we may raise the lighthouse. Uh, I haven't got an estimate for how much it is going to cost to raise the lighthouse. What are the coastal communities doing? Other coastal communities? Mm -hmm. um, I I don't really know. There's there there aren't any lighthouses that are. Um, in danger of sea level rise right now that I know of. Um, Curtis Island is high off the water. Burnt Island is high off the water. Booth Bay Harbor is off, high off the water. Um, the um, State Preservation Office is interested in their project. And um, so I'm still trying to find out uh, um, ways to mitigate um, the sea level rise. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you all for coming. You know how to get a hold of us and who to get a hold of. And um, uh, I guess that's it. So thank you all. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.